In this short tutorial, you're going to see how to code a stomp mechanic. This is something we covered in our complete free course, create your first 2D game with Godot, but we have a simpler solution now. So I wanted to make a free update to show you how to code it in a simpler way. Let's get started. Here I am in the demo scene where the character and the enemy can move, the character, the player can jump and land on the enemy. There's no stomping whatsoever. We're going to add that. I just want to run you through the test scene. It's based on the code you've learned in the Your First 2D Game course. Link in the description. The player is set to be on layer 1, collision layer 1. It masks the enemy that's on collision layer 2. And layer 3 is the environment. The enemy is on layer 2. So there you go, you can collide with the enemy thanks to that. The enemy and the player have simple scripts. I'm going to start with the enemy. We create a new class named enemy and we have some values and some very simple movement code, but also a function defined called kill that's going to kill the enemy. We're going to use that when we stomp it. In the player script, we have the same values, floor normal, speed, gravity, velocity. We also have a stomp impulse. That's going to be the force of the jump when we land on the enemy. It just has to be a floating point value here, 600. Then we have some code in there in physics process to update the velocity of the character. So we make some calculation to calculate at the speed times the direction the player is trying to move the enemy we apply the gravity and then if the um, y direction is not equal to zero it means that the player is trying to make the character jump so we make the character jump i'm going to fold that function because it doesn't matter for this tutorial we then move the character using the move and slide function from kinematic body 2D. The code I'm going to show you works with move and slide or move and slide with snap. The thing we want to do here is that when the player falls on the enemy like so, any angle, it's going to bump on the enemy and kill it. To do so, we have to check what we're colliding with, right? Because we want that to happen when we fall on the enemy, but not on the floor, of course. We can check first if the character collided this frame and second what it collided with using a few methods from the kinematic body 2D class. I'm going to expand the script editor. So we have a method called get slide count on kinematic body 2D that's going to return a number. It's going to tell you how many times your character collided and moved inside of the move and slide function. And that could be several times. This is so when you have curves, for example, in your game, your character can kind of move smoothly along them. You can loop over that. So you can say for i in get slide count, and that is going to generate a range of numbers. So if get slide count is two, i is going to be equal to zero and then to one. It will loop twice, etc. If get slide count is equal to zero, the loop will never run. From that, we can get the slide collision, the collision that happened for that slide index. We're going to create a new variable called collision and we're going to call get slide collision another method from kinematic body 2d and pass our index that returns an object if we control click on it to get the doc of type kinematic collision 2d if i click there i can inspect the properties and functions that are available on that object i can get the position the exact position at which the collision happened we have the normal this is a vector that's perpendicular to the collision point or surface we also have the collider. This is the object with which we collided. It could be the tile map if you fall on the floor. It could be the enemy if you touch the enemy. With that, we have all the information we need to make our stomp. I'm going to go back to player.gd. We're going to store first the collider. It's on our collision object. It's the collider property. Then we can create a variable to calculate if the player is stomping or not. It's going to be a Boolean value and we have to check a few conditions. So we first want to ensure that the collider is 
an instance of the enemy class. Remember, if I control click on enemy, it brings me to enemy.gd where I manually defined the enemy class. This is why I can use that enemy here. The is keyword checks yeah, if the object, in that case the collider, is an instance of the class. Then we want to check that we are on the floor. Is on floor is going to be true when you are on the floor. So it's going to be true in a few cases. If I'm on the floor here, it's going to happen. If I'm above the enemy, it's going to happen. A quick note about that, the is on floor method only works when you are colliding with something. This is why in a 2D game, you want to apply the gravity every frame. This is going to every frame, move your character down into the floor, and then the physics engine will say, oh, collision, I move you back there, and you are on the floor. And this is also gonna be true when we fell on the enemy and get pushed back up like so. That's a start. We can then try to see if the character is stomping. We're going to change its velocity. So I've named it underscore velocity to make the variable pseudo private. And we're going to set velocity.y to minus stomp impulse. That's going to make the character jump. Then we know that our collider is the enemy. So we can say collider dot kill. We're not going to get auto completion for that. So one thing you can do is cast the value. You can say, so you put it in parentheses to do that, and you say collider as enemy. The as keyword is going to ensure that your collider is of type enemy, otherwise it will not run the following code. And you can say collider as enemy dot kill. Anyway, if you try that, you're going to see it almost works. So if you fall on the enemy, you stomp. You kill the enemy, you jump. Great. Now there's another case. If you hit the enemy from the side, you also stomp, and we don't want that. The reason this is happening is because is on floor is true when you hit the enemy from the side, but you are touching the floor, right? So we need an extra condition to ensure that we are falling on the enemy. So I'm going to put it after is on floor, and we can check the collisions normal. The normal, as I told you, is a vector that's perpendicular to the collision surface. So we want to ensure that we collided with something that is pointing up. This happens when you are above the enemy like so. We say collision.normal dot is equal approximately to vector two dot up. Collision normal is a vector two. Is equal approx allows you to check for equality with other vectors. The reason you want to use that and not the equal equal is because vectors are composed of floating point values. And sometimes if you do arithmetic with floating point values, you can have two values that are almost equal, but not quite. This is due to how computers work and encode floating point values. Keep that in mind. And with that, if we hit the enemy from the side, we're not going to stomp. If we hit them from above, we stomp, voila. Note one thing I mentioned that if the collision shape is not a rectangle like that, that code will not exactly work. This is due to this line of code we just wrote, collision.normal is equal approximately to vector2.up. Here I've created two circles to explain the problem. When you have circles or capsules to represent your characters and you get a collision like so, so you arrive on the sphere at an angle, and you get pushed back like that, your collision normal is going to point that way. It's not going to be the up vector. In that case, you have to do things a bit differently. You will have to use the dot product of the vectors. You can calculate it like so. You can say collision.normal dot dot. This is a method on the vector2 class. You calculate the dot product between the normal and vector2 point up. It's going to return you the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So uh, you want to check that that value is greater than a threshold like 0 0.5, for example. The angle of the vector is the arc cosine of this dot product. So the angle between the two vectors, the collision normal and the up vector. That will work if your collision shapes are capsules or circles, and you can play with that value here. 
But with that, we're done with the troubleshooting. I invite you to check out Make Your First 2D Game with Godot if you haven't already. I'm building this video after creating that five hours long course that's completely free. And also, you will find a link in the description to our Godot Mini Tots demo repository where you can find the source code for the stomp mechanic. It's in the 2D directory, stomp mechanic. Note that you can click the green button here and download zip to download all these demos. But with that, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.